Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to close, I have two copies of Unity open here. I'm gonna close the complete version of the project, right? And let's save the changes to the scene. And then I'm going to change over to, ta-da, immediately behind it, I have the incomplete version, right? We can just take a quick look at how this looks. Uh, what we've got is we've got our Cinemachine camera, We've already added our post-processing effects. We don't have the snow in there yet. And we're just doing like a really simple, slow fly through of the scene. We're using a Cinemachine uh, dolly track. And just since Cinemachine is kind of a new thing that not everybody knows, we just take a really quick look at that. Basically what I've done is I'm just, I've just gone up to Cinemachine, create dolly camera with track, and then the virtual camera here, the body, we can choose where it is on the path by modifying the path position, right? So in this case, I've got two points on the path. Those are in the dolly track. They are here in path details, right? We have waypoint zero, waypoint one, and we're just moving through them by animating the body path position property. And we're doing that in a very simple way in timeline with just basically two keyframes. We're using an animation track and we're just animating that path position property. And you can see we have some nice uh, gizmos here to show the path of the camera where it's gonna begin and where it's gonna end. So what we wanna do is we want to replace the existing standard shader based material, which is currently on all of our level geometry from the provided assets, right? The Japanese village kit and the PBR rock landscape are both authored using the standard shader, right? And they look pretty nice already. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that shader with the Uber Shader Ultra. And so what we're gonna do is let's start with the village. So we're gonna go to the village assets, we're gonna to go to meshes and then there's a materials folder here with all the materials used in the scene, right? So we're gonna, I'm gonna do a shift click to select all of those. Now, what's really cool about this is because the Uber standard shader sort of extends the standard shader, all we have to do is just switch the shader and most of these existing fields are going to just match up and just work, right? So let's see how that works. So we're gonna, in the shader field, right? The default is standard. These materials were authored with the Unity standard shader. And we're gonna go down to Uber. We're gonna use the metallic setup, right? There's also, the standard shader has a standard and then a specular setup. Standard is a metallic setup, although it's not labeled as such, right? But these are two different sort of approaches to authoring physically based materials. But in Unity, the kind of default that we've chosen is the metallic approach. So we're gonna use the metallic setup and we're gonna choose core. And this is just going to, and you can see there's really no change in our materials in the scene, right? It just works. Uh, we've switched over now to the Uber shader and we can begin making changes to it. And the main change that we're gonna make is we are gonna switch on this dynamic snow section. So I'm just gonna click to turn that on. Ta-da, we get our lovely snow effect, right? And there's a ton of settings here that we can play around with. I'm basically just using, let's see, let's turn up the, we can turn up the deep smoothening to get a little more. I think that's nice just to clean up some of those edges. We'll turn up the deep smoothing a little bit. Maybe turn up the bump texture a little if we want something a little more texture to it. That kind of hides some of those seams as well, which is kind of nice. And then there's a microsurface texture, which we can kind of see a little bit in the, it's a little hard to see without getting really close to it, but it basically just applies another layer of texture for when you look closely at it. And we've got world mapping on, right? So that it's gonna map relative to the world space, which I think in this case is a good idea. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is we want to connect this up to a global control, right? So that we can, go from snowy to not snowy immediately, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on global control over level, right? And this is the snow level. And then we are going to 
click on the controller button here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna look around through the scene and say, is there already a controller script? In this case, there isn't one found, so we're gonna make one and we're gonna attach it to the camera. So we'll just hit okay. Now, we can now see we have added the Uber Global Param script, which is now gonna allow us to control our snow throughout the scene uniformly, right across all objects, which is the way it should behave. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on, I mean, we could play around with the snow level, right? Here now we can just see it that it's working, right? The snow level down, snow level up. Um, mess with the snow dissolve. But what we really wanna do is we wanna edit the rainfall snowfall controller. So we can turn on simulate. Now, immediately the snow goes away because right now the temperature, the, the imaginary simulated temperature in our scene is 20 degrees Celsius, right? Which is above freezing. If we take it down and we turn up our fall intensity, we can now see that snow accumulates in the scene, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this at runtime to create the effect that we want. We turn it back up and so it should go away. Yeah, there we go. Now, obviously that will happen kind of in a more smooth way at runtime, um, but you can kind of see uh, the effect working. And then we can have a time scale for the weather. Uh, if we had water going on, we could freeze the water. Um, and we can also add a particle system to kind of show some snowflakes while uh, the snow is accumulating. So we're going to select that from the, we can just click here to pull up the prefab, which is the snow prefab. And I'm just going to drop that into the scene. And what that will do once we assign it, it is it will follow the camera and rain down snowflakes as it gets colder. Now, I have added a very, very simple little script here, um, which is a snow controller script, which I'll double click to open. This is on the main camera. And basically this just allows me to dynamically change the snow level at runtime. All right, so what we've got here, right, is we've just added a private Uber global params variable, right? That's just the same type as the script that's attached to the camera. And then in awake, we're gonna get a reference to it, right? We're gonna use get component and get and store a reference to it in that variable. Then we have two functions, lower temperature and raise temperature. And all we're gonna do is set the temperature field, the temperature variable of our Uber global param script to either the low temperature, which in this case is negative one, it's just a private float, or it's 20, right? Which is the high temperature. And here in update, I'm just checking if the fire one, the uh, left mouse button has been pressed, then we're gonna lower the temperature. And if fire two is pressed, we're gonna raise the temperature, right? So super duper simple little script just to control this. You could also control this. Actually, the reason these uh, functions are public is because I was originally doing this from an animation and I was using an animation event to trigger these, but actually I thought it was cooler to do it with a mouse click, just so you can see it's really real time and that we can kind of do it in a more dynamic way. So now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and play our scene. And let's maximize. And when I left click, we can see our snowflakes start to fall. And if you look at the roofs, you can see they're starting to get filled in with snow and the rocks as well. Oh, actually we can see here. So the rocks are not starting to get filled in with snow, right? Cause I, I missed a step. I haven't yet changed the material for the rocks. So that's undermining my demo a little bit there. So let's fix that right now. So what I'm gonna do is basically the same procedure. Now there is actually one little hitch with these rocks, uh, which is that there was a field that doesn't kind of perfectly match over. So we'll see how to fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these just shift click to select all the rock materials. And again, I'm just gonna switch the switch to the metallic setup core version of the shader. Now you see these come out, these do change. These come out very black. And for some reason, the metallic field of the secondary maps is coming in at one. It's coming in very high. So these are coming in as very metal based, right? And we're getting that metal base, that kind of reflective surface, which is just making them look black. So by pulling that uh, back down, we can get our materials looking back 
uh, the way we want them to. And then again, we're just going to turn on dynamic snow, make sure that we have global control over the level and the controller has already been connected or, or added. And we can see right away that we start getting this lovely uh, snow effect on our rocks. So let's take a look. And then if I right click, yeah, we can see that fade away. It's not the most natural fade, right? It's happening a little bit quickly, but we could tweak it and sweeten it up. But I love the way the snow looks accumulating uh, and interacting with these rocks, right? It just looks so nice and organic. I just really enjoy that. And I also love the way it looks on the roofs, on these Japanese roofs. I just feel like it looks so cool. So, you know, I'm definitely not an expert artist, but I thought this came out pretty good and definitely came out pretty good for about, you know, a day or two worth of work, just combining assets that, uh, you know, I got off the asset store for not a lot of money. So that is kind of the very basic version of the Uber standard shader ultra right now. I want to show three assets in this training. So I'm just showing one kind of simple aspect of it, but there's all kinds of really cool stuff that you can do with it. And I really urge you to go ahead and check it out and learn more about it because it's got a bunch of really cool parallax occlusion mapping features and really interesting opportunities to, to extend the standard shader and, and do really gorgeous stuff. So I, I had a lot of fun playing with it myself and I definitely recommend that you check it out. All right, so let's pause there. We've kind of gotten an overview of Uber Standard Shader, and we've looked at how we can make these cool weather effects or this snow effect in this case. Um, in the next segment, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Octave 3D, and we're going to learn how we can use that to author really cool modular level designs.